Welcome to the second installment of the Hashtag Study Hack series, where we use lessons from the science of psychology to help you become a better student. In the last installment, we talked about multitasking, how it harms your learning, impedes your productivity, and that the things we multitask with, such as social media apps on our phones, are very addictive because they're rewarding to our minds. And over time, it's hard to ignore them. In today's session, we're going to talk about ego depletion and how you can structure your digital environment to set yourself up for success. When you're faced with a temptation, such as junk food when you're trying to eat healthy, or distractions when you're trying to work on an essay, we have to exercise self-control, or in other words, willpower, to override the desire to engage with that distraction or eat that unhealthy food. A research in psychology, however, has shown that when we exercise self-control, we become more tired. In other words, our real power is a limited resource, and the more we use it to override an impulse to engage in a distraction or to eat an unhealthy food, the more tired we become, which may lead to us indulging in the very behavior we're trying to avoid. Collectively, these findings in psychological research are called ego depletion studies. In other words, your ego is drained every time you have to exercise self-control to restrain yourself from indulging in a behavior you're trying to avoid. To put it simply, avoiding temptation is costly. It costs you energy. So if we can modify our environment so you don't have to constantly face a temptation, you're much more likely to be successful in being able to behave in the way you intend. For example, if you're trying to eat healthy, it's a good idea to take the cake out of the fridge. Imagine Sarah, she's a first year student working on a paper for her sociology class. Now writing a paper is difficult work, you have to remember novel ideas you've read, you have to remember the research you've done, and you have to write the correct grammar and spelling and use good vocabulary, all the while being aware that your writing is going to be later judged by a TA or a professor. This is hard work. And when some of us are faced with hard work, we may occasionally avoid it, something we call procrastination. Now, Sarah is trying very hard not to procrastinate. She is staying focused and trying to write her paper. But suddenly, a notification light goes up on her Facebook Messenger, on her laptop. Now, she may inhibit her desire, in other words, overwrite her impulse to check this message the first time. She may overwrite her desire to check it the second time, but eventually this act of self-control is going to be tiring for Sarah. So she's going to give in and go on Facebook. You probably remember from the last video that this type of multitasking is very harmful and Sarah, as a result, is going to have less productivity, make more mistakes on her essay, and it's going to take her longer to write it. Now, when you're faced with a physical object, like a cake when you're trying to eat healthy, it's easy to remove that temptation from your environment by getting the cake out of the fridge. But we need our computers for much of the academic work we do. At the same time, the internet is filled with temptations, from video sharing websites like YouTube, to social media websites like Facebook and Instagram, to Snapchat and many other platforms that constantly grab our attention and are enjoyable to spend time on, but at the end of the day, they distract us from the task we need to focus on. These distractions are fun and rewarding to our brains, which makes them addictive over time and hard to ignore. That's why relying on your willpower to override the temptation to engage in them over and over again is ineffective and doomed to fail on the long run. What is the solution? In the same way that we can structure our physical environment to remove temptations, we can structure our digital environment. This is called pre-commitment, an idea in psychology that you can plan ahead so that in the moment you don't have to fight off these distractions. In other words, by taking action beforehand, you prepare the environment such that in the moment you're ready to work on what you need to work on. Many of you do this by setting your alarm clock the night before. This is one type of pre-commitment, where you set up your environment the night before when you have the energy and the mental state to do so, such that in the moment when you know you're going to be weaker in terms of willpower, you can handle the task at hand. We can use a similar pre-commitment strategy to avoid distractions when you're working on your computer. This takes the form of software called web blockers. Web blockers 
prevent you from going on the internet or certain number of websites that you choose for amount of time that you decide. There are many applications that allow you to do this. For example, Freedom, Focal Filter, Cold Turkey, and some other ones. We have links to them below. All these applications share one thing in common. They block your access either to internet or to a number of websites for an amount of time that you choose beforehand. In essence, you exercise willpower once and you have a distraction-free digital environment for the next amount of time so you can focus on your studies and do well. Some of these apps, such as Freedom, can also be installed on your cell phone or tablet so you can avoid distractions on all your digital devices while you're trying to focus. However, simply putting your phone face down or in your bag and out of sight can do wonders. So here's your homework assignment. Go and try one of these web blockers and see how it impacts your productivity. You may even try to combine these with the Pomodoro, which we learned about in the last video. So for example, for one duration of a Pomodoro, you activate a web blocker to prevent you from going on distracting websites. Now, aside from a web blocker, another powerful tool to help you study better is keeping track of your behavior. Something we call feedback in psychology has been shown to improve behaviors across a number of domains, whether exercise, eating healthy, sleeping better, or losing weight. Gathering feedback on your studying can also be very helpful in allowing you to study better and improve how well you prepare for your courses. Aside from the Pomodoro tracker, if you often study on your laptop, a useful tool is called Rescue Time. It's a web browser extension that keeps track of how you're spending your time on the internet. Simply knowing how you're spending your time is a great way to start improving how well you use your time. So today we talked about ego depletion, or the idea that your willpower is used up if you repeatedly have to avoid distractions. A much better strategy is called pre-commitment, where you structure your environment beforehand to help you perform better in the moment. When it comes to your computer, you can structure your digital environment using web blockers, applications that can block your access to the internet or to a certain number of websites that you decide for an amount of time that you choose. Lastly, keeping track of your behavior is a fantastic method in helping you improve it. So go on and try one of these tools and employ one of these study hacks to become a better student.